Thank you, Ta'in, for inviting the World Bank today. And I believe the next monthly AIN hour um, in a month's time or so it has a second installment of some other World Bank colleagues who will join um, this discussion as well. We're really happy to be here and to be able to, um, to share with you about um, the work that we've been doing in thinking about what does it mean when we scale digital and data technologies in health and how can we do so in ways that brings value for everyone. Um, the equity lens is of course very important in this work and that will be a key theme. The, the way that we will present this work today is I will first give an overview of the history behind the rationale for and the key messages in our report, Digital and Health, what will it take um, to unlock the value for everyone? And then my colleagues, Millar and Tiago, will present and discuss with you about the implementation briefs that we've prepared that really helps countries to unpack specific um, themes or specific areas that they might want to focus on as they make progress in their in their digital in health journey. And that is is the basis. And then we have, as I mentioned, other World Bank colleagues at a future Ayn Hour who will present on how to operationalize and make how to bring all the pieces together through thinking about a convergence uh, convergence workshop approach that I know Ayn has also um, championed particularly with your AN general annual general meeting, um, very the very successful meeting in November of last year in Jakarta. So we all know, and I feel I don't need to say this to the audience here, but digital brings value. And I think that is a message, despite the fact that many of us who are on this call probably already feels this way. Um, digital, it, it's a message worth repeating because not yet everyone sees it this way. Um, digital bring value, designed with people at the center of technology, digital technology and data are essential for universal health coverage. It can help us reach more people, particularly underserved communities. It can help us um, deliver more, better, seamless and new services that we haven't delivered before. Um, digital first approaches to NCD prevention, for example, is one of the new kinds of services that we can develop. Thinking about digital's um, inclusion within that service delivery modalities from the get-go. And it can help us to do so with less financial stress um, because it can help to improve efficiencies and therefore save costs. We also know from the experience with COVID, and it feels almost old these days to still talk about COVID, but we know that the level of digital adoption prior to COVID was key to responding better to COVID. I always look at this figure on the right-hand side. If you look at the level of digital adoption, and this is um, in the health sector, but also across government. So the more digitized um, society was, um, the larger changes, quicker um, changes there was in new cases after the peak. Um, and this is from the same study, a study that Heinrichs et al. conducted. And you can see that across the more than 70 studies they looked at, um, digital infrastructure was the most key factor in determining um, the country's response to COVID-19 and was more key than things like clinical management, telehealth, and others. The point really being that digitalization is absolutely critical. You could see that that um, digital infrastructure is first, telehealth is second, and then all the other um, the other factors, public attitude, social, political, con social, cultural, and political context, and so on. So it just goes to show you that digitization is is really critical. Um, this is the study that McKinsey did in Africa that shows that digital can also bring efficiency gains. They estimated that it can save up to 15% of health system costs and the distribution of where those health system costs would come from would be mainly from two um, intra two um, efforts, um, telehealth, in other words, virtual interactions, as well as going paperless through health information exchanges and electronic health records. Again, making the point that digital isn't just important because we all believe in technology, digital is important because it can bring value. 
the World Bank itself has recognized digitization as a critical development priority for the World Bank. In fact, in 2022, the World Bank adopted um, an approach to digitization and development mm -hmm. that encourages and makes um, it imperative for the World Bank to invest in five critical areas relating to digitalization and development, digital infrastructure, platforms, enablers, safeguards, and the cross important cross-cutting areas of social and gender inclusion, and of course, regional and global collaboration for which this um, meeting such as this one is a valuable opportunity for us to foster that regional and global coordin coordination with networks such as, such as AIN. The World Bank itself has invested quite significantly in digital health in the last 10 years. Um, if we look back at our investments across different global practices or different areas of investment, both in the health sector itself, the blue on the left, digital development sector, the governance sector, and the social protection and job section sector, you can see that that, and this is of of um four billion dollars in investment that the World Bank has made in the last decade. You can see that the majority of that was for foundational investments such as digital ID, hardware, connectivity, and so on. Um, the next largest category of expenditure has been in financing health information systems and then a smaller proportion, 15 and 1% respectively, has been spent on scaling solutions as well as on the frontier um, investments. And of course, with generative AI that's on, on the in the center of our minds every day these days, I think that will that picture will we anticipate will will change in the future. But this, this just gives you a picture of what are the different areas of investment that the World Bank itself um, has made through um, investments in, in countries and in other words, what country priorities have been in, in digital in, in digitalization. Um, but we also know that despite all this good progress and despite the value that digital can bring, there are still challenges. And again, I feel I don't need to spend a lot of time in explaining these challenges because I think we live this every day. A flowering of data and of applications on the left is the famous graph from Uganda. On the right hand side shows you the annual compound growth rate in data around the world or what we call the um, global data sphere is anticipated to grow by 27% per year. And um, the healthcare sector, in other words, healthcare data is anticipated to grow even more at 36% per year. Um, and so there's just volumes of data. And we know that um, the World Economic Forum's estimate and some other estimates suggest that only between three to 5% of this huge volume of data that we're generating actually gets used to inform and improve health outcomes. We use mostly these data for reporting purposes or safeguarding purposes. We know financing is a challenge and we also know that fragmentation is a challenge. Um, with this, we, we know the maturity of digital health around the world. This is from the famous Global Digital Health Monitor. And, and again, I'm sure that many of us are very familiar with this. It's very interesting to note the differences between, between regions and also the differences um, between low, middle, and high high income countries. I think an aspect that we're not always as the digital health community focusing on as much that I think perhaps we could focus on a little bit more with more intention in the future is to think about the maturity of digital health versus the digital transformation of government writ large. This graph shows you on the horizontal axis, the normalized scores of the Global Digital Health Monitor um, data for these countries. And we just pulled out some example countries in the dots. Every gray dot or color dot represents a country. And you can see on the vertical axis, the normalized score that the country achieved from the World Bank's GovTech Maturity Index. And the GovTech Maturity Index is an index that looks at digitalization across all of government. And you can see based on this that countries are in very different places, right? There are some countries that have lower digital health maturity and lower GovTech maturity. And there are some countries that have higher digital health maturity, but lower GovTech maturity. The point is where we really want to be is countries should have, as their GovTech maturity grows, so should their digital health maturity. These things need to grow in unison, in lockstep with each other, if we really want to be, want to be successful. 
um, and this just shows that same data, um, the GovTech maturity index, the colors, and the global digital health maturity phase for that country, the numbers on, on each of the countries, if you want to look at a comparison at what it looks like in Latin America, to Africa, to Europe, to, to Asia, for example. Um, and so with all of this in background, looking at the value that digital can bring, recognizing the challenges that there are, and understanding that countries have not made equal progress in, in all areas, um, the, the World Bank's view is that for us to get to the next layer, next level of success and getting the most value from digital technologies and data, we need to shift our focus from thinking about digitalization almost as a vertical service in healthcare delivery to digital embedded, digital technology and data embedded in every part of health healthcare delivery and health systems management. That means we think as we design service delivery, health workforce management, medical education, health financing, pandemic preparedness, pharmaceuticals and nutraceutical discovery and, and rollout, um, supply chain, climate change and health, digital and nutrition. In all these different areas, digital and data are embedded, should be embedded in how they, they're delivering. So that we think of digital as, as an inclusive and um, I would say, we know WHO is six health system building blocks. I would argue that digitalization and data is an essential seventh building block of a health system and making making it function it function well. So to get to this place where we have um, we move from digital in health or we move from digitalization to digital in health, um, both supply and demand needs to mature amongst users, providers, health system managers, and when we think about data services, um, writ large, but it's it's this change in philosophy and thinking from digitalization to digital in health that we believe is critical in in achieving the next layer of success. And if we do that, we will have seamless and integrated systems for better health from a country's health data sphere to the information systems where all those data are kept and how they are linked and integrated to all the different technologies and digital health applications and interventions that feed information to information systems that in turn co comprises a country's health data sphere. And the, the key to ask ourselves is how can we bring all these, all these different pieces together? So as the last part of our report, and as I conclude my the first presentation of today, um, what the report on digital and health unlocking the value for everyone says is that for countries to make progress along this journey of improving the maturity of how digital and data technologies are improving healthcare, um, there are three priorities for them to focus on. They need to prioritize, they need to connect, and they, they need to scale. And there are 10 specific recommendations um, under prioritizing, focusing on problems and reaching the underserved. In other words, focusing on people who don't have access to those solutions, as well as under connect, the data governance aspect, leadership and partnership, and then the connecting the health data dots that are and filling in the missing gaps that of course are so important. And then under the scaling, in order for us to get scale right, um, there's the need for digital skills, um, literacy and awareness to come in as well as nimble public private, but also private private partnerships that are needed. Um, we need to think about digital health in the context of the wider digital transformation. And of course, financing and implementation is going to be key. And the implementation briefs that have also been produced is um, will be helpful in helping countries think through those issues around financing and implementation. Um, sorry, I'm struggling a little to maneuver my slides. I'm sorry about that. Um, and so, the question that countries might ask is, where do we start? Prioritize, connect and scale is obviously an all inclusive approach. And um, will my country be able to afford it? And what we looked at here are countries, we know that countries are at different stages of their um, digital GovTech maturity and, and digital health maturity. And that collective number is on the vertical axis and on the horizontal axis, you can see whether countries have fiscal space available for 
um, health or not, and and whether they have negative fiscal space, which is less money from government available for healthcare or positive fiscal space. Now, of course, this is a dynamic picture and it changes, but you can again see that countries are in very different stages. Some countries have negative fiscal space and high maturity. Some have negative fiscal space and low digital maturity and so on in each of these four quadrants. And in the report itself, which you're welcome to download from our website, you'll see that we make specific recommendations for countries in each of these four quadrants. The point being that all countries can make progress in digital regardless of their fiscal situation, but of course they need to keep that fiscal situation in mind as they make decisions about what to implement and where. And, and this is to say, and this is an example, I'm sure we some of us know, know this well, um, this is from work that, that Path had done with um, the government of Tanzania, looking at specific different foundational high impact and quick win digital interventions, how long they would take to implement and the cost of each of them. And the question is, how are countries, are countries developing these kinds of roadmaps or blueprints to the, help them to um, prioritize that which they should implement, knowing that they don't have money to finance everything at the same time? Are they thinking about how their current digital solutions, if they move from a 2G or 3G to a 4G solution, can that save money? For example, if they use reverse billing for providing data access for community health workers, can that save their money? How can they find some of the money for digitalization in changing the way in which services are delivered? Those are all important imperatives for countries to keep, to keep in mind. And lastly, just to say that um, the report itself it, it's available in several languages. There's a the full report, a 30-page summary, and a two-page summary of the report available, as well as the implementation briefs are all available on our website, and you can look at it by scanning the QR code here. With that, and without further ado, Tiago, over, over to you. Good evening, everyone. So in the next few minutes, uh, to leave enough time for discussion, I will uh, briefly walk you through uh, the big picture uh, you know, what, why do we need these uh, implementation briefs? What purpose do they serve? Um, what are they? The topics and types of questions that they cover, um, the structure of the briefs, the target audience and the sources and materials. And then uh, we'll have enough time for discussion, hopefully. So as Marley's pointed out, health systems are facing increasing demands to deliver uh, new, more, and better, and seamless services that are affordable to everyone. Uh, but despite the progress that we've seen in, in recent decades, inequality and effectiveness and inefficiency remain high. Improving healthcare is getting harder, not easier, uh, but a new approach where digital technology and data are infused into every aspect of health systems management and health service delivery can help countries face these challenges and bring them closer to the goal of universal health coverage. The World Bank report, Digital in Health and Locking the Value for Everyone, offers this new way of thinking that Marlies has expanded on in the previous um, presentation. It makes 10 recommendations to prioritize specific digital health investments for people, problems, and the planet, working with the private sector to connect the disparate leadership, regulatory information, and infrastructure dots, and to scale digital health in sustainable, replicable, and equitable ways for the long run. So to give countries the confidence and the practical guidance on where to start, regardless of the country's state of digital maturity or the fiscal challenges that it faces, the report is accompanied by practical implementable extensions called implementation know-how briefs. These help countries implement the 10 recommendations. Every implementation brief provides practical information on how to start planning and designing, how to implement the digital and health recommendations. Every brief focuses on a specific topic of relevance to the digital and health transformation. Presently, topics covered by the briefs include digital health maturity assessments and toolkits, data governance in health, cybersecurity in health, interoperability in health, digital health records, telemedicine and virtual healthcare delivery, and working with the private sector organizations to deliver digital solutions in health. The briefs 
help answer questions such as, what is the importance of addressing cybersecurity risks in health? And how can countries adopt a comprehensive approach to managing cyber risks? Why are robust data governance frameworks necessary? And how do these uh, help protect individual privacy and ensure ethical and responsible use of data in the public interest? Why is it important to conduct digital health maturity assessments before designing and investing in digital health strategies and programs? And how do you conduct them? How can digital health records be implemented to improve patient outcomes, care coordination, and operational efficiency? What is the significance of interoperability in a digital and health approach, and how can it enable the exchange and sharing of health data across different systems and organizations? How can telemedicine and virtual healthcare delivery be used to improve access to high quality care and reduce healthcare costs? And in what ways can country teams engage with private sector organizations to unlock collaboration, innovation, and uptake of digital health solutions? These are just some of the questions. It, they're broader, so please have a look. There is no one-size-fits-all approach to implementation, and different countries, regions, stakeholders will have different needs and objectives. We recognize this. And we provide guidance for audiences at different stages of digital development and maturity. The aim is not to make the reader's topic experts. Uh, the briefs are, are fairly short and summarized. It's the objective is to provide them with enough information to figure out how a given topic fits into their health and digital health investments. What are the dependencies across the topics and what are the key questions to ask? All briefs have the same structure, so each one describes why a specific topic that it focuses on is important. It provides a basic understanding of the topic, including the key terms and definitions, which is key in digital health, given there are many different definitions. It proposes a set of key implementation considerations and steps for policymakers, illustrates the challenges and pitfalls, lists resources and case studies. It gives a one-page printable checklist for action, and it delineates a tentative, tentative theory of change, explaining how investments can lead to better health system performance. The implementation know-how briefs are written for country teams, policymakers, and stakeholders involved in the digital and health investments and implementation activities. The focus of the, is on the implementation at policy level. The briefs build on many publicly available high-quality resources, including toolkits, maturity models, frameworks, checklists, and methodologies developed by countries, international organizations, multilateral development banks, non-governmental organizations, academics, civil society organizations. We cast quite a wide net. We look for good resources that are available already. Each brief was written by a World Bank team and reviewed by World Bank teams on the field and external expert stakeholders. As Marlies pointed out, over the past decade, the World Bank has invested heavily in digital health, including in health information systems, digital government, identification systems, and infrastructure. The bank will continue to support countries in digital and health, recognizing that every dollar for health systems strengthening can be an investment in digital and data, making health systems work better for everyone. The implementation briefs seek to support this agenda. You can find them online, and I look forward to uh, getting your inputs. Uh, for example, what other topics would you like us to write implementation briefs about? What other aspects should the briefs cover? Uh, are there other formats that we should consider, like online formats, blogs, events? And do you have any other feedback that will help us improve on our work? Thank you very much. Look forward to the discussion. Yes, thank you so much for your presentations, Marilise and Thiago. Uh, before we open the floor for questions, I'd like to call on our Executive Director, Mr. Diagonis, for some reflections and maybe questions to our speakers. Uh, thank you, Ja, and uh, thank you, uh, Marilise, Muller, and Diego. Uh, it was very, very helpful uh, to have you uh, with us for this webinar on a very important topic. And thanks for also joining our ANGM in Jakarta and then also continuing this collaboration and uh, support. Uh, I have a couple of reflections. I think the, especially the implementation briefs are very, very uh, useful and important. And as, uh, for a network like us, uh, which works closely with the, with the countries, I have a couple of uh, questions to begin with. I think, I think this is not the, uh, 
the last uh, set of implementation briefs because there are many more. And then the list is very, very uh, impressive. And then uh, some of, I, I can also see some of the partners uh, joining us in this webinar and we have been working together with them on some of these topics. Uh, probably I was just thinking a um, couple of questions to begin with. Like before that, I think some of this implementation briefs will also be useful for us to uh, deep dive or be dealt in the convergence workshop, which Meryl is also mentioned, because usually we receive such uh, uh, requests from countries for specialized topics. For example, one of the countries that we were involved recently in support and especially on cybersecurity, we also arranged a, a session for them. Probably uh, looking at how we can actually translate this implementation or how briefs into action. Uh, that is somewhere that uh, our network can contribute. Some quick questions for you. Uh, in what ways can countries receive help uh, from the World Bank to move forward towards a digital health in approach, uh, which was presented, right? So uh, how we can bring the technical expertise from World Bank uh, to help with the implementation in the countries where uh, which, which face such large gaps? Especially there are situations in the countries where uh, countries already have a digital health strategy or a blueprint, but still they do have a problem in operationalizing it. And that's where like actually AHIN gets together, works with the partners, aligns the resources in, 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 in helping with them with the implementations. So this is the question, like how we can actually bring this kind of expertise uh, as a support from World Bank to the countries in our work. The second one is how can networks such as AHIN, and then we have colleagues from other networks also, uh, how we can help with the production of implementation briefs uh, the ones that you have already mentioned, and there are a few others, like especially related to uh, regulations or regulatory sandbox, and then also uh, in terms of resilient governance in digital health itself. There are many, many topics that we can, but how we can actually co-create them, how we can actually work together and then make it like a living repository with you case studies and experiences from com countries coming in. I will stop it at that right now. And then uh, probably there will be more questions from those who have joined. Thank you. Over to you. Thanks very much, Jay. I will start to give some answers, but then also turn to Malar and um, to Tiago for any contributions that they would like to make. In terms of your first question, um, how can the World Bank help countries? Um, the World Bank can help countries in three ways. First is um, through financing. As you know, we do finance digital um, technology and data um, efforts as part of our funding for health system strengthening. Second, we can um, support countries through technical assistance um, that the World Bank provides to countries. Um, and that can range from, for example, helping a country to develop uh, its digital health blueprint, helping a country to develop governance standards for digital health, um, helping a country to think through um, how to create an appropriate enterprise architecture for its um, all the health data that are in the country, um, doing evaluations and operations research, figuring out what worked, what didn't work, why did it work, and sharing that, that information. And then the third way that we can help is through um, facilitating knowledge with with other countries so for example we have um we often facilitate um things like study tours between countries um several of the countries in in the IN community are also part of um, the joint learning networks um digital health collaborative where countries actually come together define priorities of what are important and then um, they work on those products themselves. So, so Jay, this notion of what you've spoken about in your second question about the implementation briefs being um, both live and being co-created, those are obviously important areas of focus for us. And we are, um, uh, Elvin, I like your question about, is there a prescribed sequence? Um, you know, we, um, 
we thought about that a lot, but it's hard because countries are in such different places, right? So, you know, for what's important for one country might not necessarily be important for other countries. So I, I think that, um, you know, the question is that we always start with is what is the most important health sector problem that the country faces? And how can we use digital and data technologies to help build out pulled out from, from there. But let me, um, Millar, hand over to you for any additional contributions and thoughts from your side. And um, then also if Tiago has any contributions. Over over to you, Millar. Thank you, Marilise. Yeah, just to add to what Marilise said, uh, is that maybe I maybe I can illustrate through a quick example. Um, you know, many of our uh, you know, uh, TTL staff team leaders who are in the country office, who are engaging with countries on a daily basis, they often come to us on a particular topic, say telemedicine, and they're like, okay, how do we start this? Exactly the question within a particular problem, uh, problem area. Uh, the question often is, uh, what are some of the challenges? Uh, where do we start? You know, can you point us to some kind of starter information? So, Right there, the implementation briefs can, uh, you know, bring you that information. If you want to understand what the topic is, what are resources that are available, and then make you, you know, help you take a more informed decision about next steps. It's not easy, and it's and there's a reason why we've not been very prescriptive because there's a, uh, you know, you need to anchor whatever you're doing within the health the, the health sector problem that Marilise pointed out, but also within the country context. Um, so that that's that's how we've approached the implementation briefs. But Jay, hopefully, we want to hear more because that is that is our first version of the implementation briefs. So it's exactly the point that you made is that we seek more input from networks uh, such as AHIN, who are actually converting this into implementation in, into actual implementation to see what the gaps are in the current Im implementation briefs and how we can address some of those gaps in the next phase of the implementation briefs that. Uh, that we're going to come up with. Um, and the second point that I wanted to uh, sort of address directly to how can, you know, can you provide uh, feedback into these implementation briefs? Um, so the way we've approached uh, uh, approached the, uh, the implementation briefs, we intentionally did not make it a very longish report. Uh, someone said there's just so much information that's going at countries. For that reason, we we kept it short so you're able to read it again with the intent of understanding the domain uh you know understanding uh, provide you know having all those resources come come together and uh in a way that you know you're able to read it um uh, without having without getting overwhelmed by a 100 page report i'm not saying 100 page reports are not important but it's just you know with, with the amount of information that comes to us we wanted it to be a bit more uh, concise and practical uh, i'm just seeing something in the chat and with respect to future uh, inputs uh, to the uh, through the uh, for the implementation briefs, again, Jay, if we can take a few minutes here and really hear from the participants here on what their feedback is on on what are some of the areas that would be useful for them. Uh, you've all you've already mentioned some, and Tiago has already shared some of the areas we're looking at uh, that's emerging as a particular gap. For instance, uh, you know, we're looking at health data regulations and. Uh, you know, and there's a lot of discussion around this, but what we've come to understand is practically, um, you know, teams that are at the forefront of implementation uh, have difficulty understanding even simple concepts when it comes to regulations, like, for instance, difference between policies, legislation, regulations, what does that mean, who implements, what's the capacity requirement for that, uh, what are some of the important considerations you make in these regulations, and more importantly, how do you ensure that it actually gets implemented, moves from just a regulatory or a policy instrument into an actual implementation? So those are some of the type of thinking that that we have uh, with, the, with the topics that we have in mind. I'll stop here, Jay, so we can hear more from the uh, participants in the in the call. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Marilis and Malad. Uh, maybe we, I think we can open the floor for other questions. Any other reflections? We also see a lot of partners of AHIN here with whom we have been working together uh, in some of these topics, as well as Convergence Workshop, uh, for whom these topics on implementation know-how briefs will be very useful. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Melalis, Mala, and Tiago. Uh, I'm Bunchai uh, from AHIN. I, uh, I have a question that uh, 
right now I just talking with the uh, uh, USAID, and this is World Bank, and then previously we talking at ADB, and also with several developing partner. All are now working on the digital health. Uh, to me, I, I would like to ask you that how how those are uh, really big. A part, a part, I mean, party or the big developing partner like World Bank and uh, and, and working together uh, uh, into kind of the with the countries. How what do you have the mechanics that the country can be pull all of these? Uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, maybe technical assistance or the, the 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 funding, something like that. Any any way that we uh, we can have, uh, I mean, inform the country that uh, how uh, how we should have a big de developing partner, which is a very good. I I really like the know how the uh, beef because of uh, it, uh, it it very uh, uh, kind of enlightening about how how it uh, it it can be implemented. Uh, even it may be broader because it is really difficult to kind of the pest cry or to 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 make it more specific. So that is uh, one question in the first part, and the second quit uh, and the second part is the complementation. Over to you. Um, Bunchan, I'm going to ask your you answer your second question first. Um, I th I think that. Development partners recognize that coordination and reduction in fragmentation is important, right? If we have two development partners going into a country, one is supporting one supply chain management information system and another is supporting another one, it puts the country in a difficult position, right? And so there are global, first of all, development partners agreed on the donor alignment principles for investing in digital health um, in 2019. Secondly, there is a global um, coordinating mechanism that will in fact be launched on the 20th of February, the Global Initiative on Digital Health. That is um, an effort that was initiated through the G20 um, last year and is continuing this year, that's really trying to bring all development partners together. But I will say, you know, and I've said this before in different other public fora, that we are not going to solve the challenge of fragmentation in digital health by developing development partners talking with each other. We are an important part of the puzzle. And yes, we need to be talking to each other more and make sure that we're not duplicating. But if countries are in the driver's seat and if countries have a clear roadmap and clear priorities and countries have data governance standards and minimum requirements for health information systems that want to be part of the country's health data network, um, if those things are in place and a country can say to any development partner, we need money for this, we don't need money for that. I think that, to me, is where the real problem of fragmentation is going to be solved, is when we can um, support and help countries to really be in the driver's seat. You know, just as we've solved the challenges around maternal and child health with sector-wide approaches, we need similar sector-wide approach thinking when it comes to digital health, with governments very strongly in the in the driver's seat. And we've seen this work. We've seen it work in countries where governments have said to a development partner, "Not this solution. We're all working on scaling this solution." And and so I we we know that it can work. Um, and I think it requires all of us to talk to each other under the country's very um, strong leadership. And then I think we can really solve the problems of fragmentation. Uh, thank you, uh, Marilis. Uh, Char, do we have any other questions? Uh, so the first one is from Dr. Aminul. Um, there are many countries implementing digital health transformation journeys scatteredly. Even they are implementing EHR without data governance, data standard, and information security. So the question is, how can the World Bank help these um, scenarios, including countries like Bangladesh? 
you know, Malar is, is leading the World Bank's work on health data governance. So I'm going to ask Malar if you maybe want to give a response to some of the areas that you, some of the ways in which the World Bank can help. Uh, thanks, Marilise. Uh, this might be a little bit of repetition, but uh, I hopefully this is uh, helpful. Uh, um, you know, Marilise already pointed out there are multiple ways in which you, you know, we could uh, bring support for you. Uh, in fact, there's an, actually a project that's going on uh, in Bangladesh on digital health, of which I think uh, the health data governance is a big is 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 a, a big focus area as well. But in addition, separately, uh, we can provide support in the form of uh, technical support, uh, where we can come in and uh, help you understand a particular area, provide a or develop a product that could directly feed into your implementation uh, implementation plan. Uh, the other is, of course, through the uh, uh, financing mechanisms that the bank has where, uh, you know, a project is designed and um, that, that, again, supports the implementation where, again, the what we're doing is that's the purpose of the implementation know-how briefs uh, and other products that we're producing is to be able to help design these components around data governance in the financing, um, in the lending projects uh, that are, again, uh, with a focus on a health system problem. I want to tie this response to Vikas's question as well, saying that, uh, you know, he's raised a point saying uh, there's still a disconnect between uh, digital, you know, investments in digital projects and investments in health. There's still that disconnect. So because that is, that's exactly one of the things that we are at least trying to solve from, from uh, in World Bank financing now with the report and the implementation know-how briefs and more of technical capacity building, even for our own task team leaders, is to help make that connection uh, and bringing that digital and health in, 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 into the financing uh, make, uh, lending engagements of the bank. Um, but uh, we are, again, uh, you know, very happy to hear any feedback if you're seeing uh, challenges uh, from your perspective as you're, as you're embarking on this implementation uh, journeys from the country perspectives. Thank you, Malar. I, I think there's another question that was answered by Marlies through the chat. Uh, maybe we can have it in the recording as well. So the question is, what is your exact roadmap of achieving UHC, especially among LMICs? I, I think the answer to that question, you know, Malar just mentioned it. And the World Bank doesn't have a fixed roadmap, right? We... Um, help countries to understand where they're at with regards to universal health coverage using the um, UHC service coverage index, looking at how health financing is working, looking at out-of-pocket expenditure. And then we support countries in designing um, health strategies that will help them to overcome the biggest gaps in universal health coverage. As we know, universal health coverage is an aspirational goal. And so the real question is, what progress can countries make on a day-to-day, week-to-week basis to deliver the right health services to everybody who needs it? And then the question about how digital and data technologies can help countries to do that better becomes one part of the question around how we achieve or how we make progress towards achieving universal, universal health coverage. And I think the reason this is a really important question is that often we have seen, and I think we would all agree, that we've often seen investments in digital technology and data, investments in information systems is done for the purpose of reporting or is not always done for the purpose of with a clear goal in mind of how we can improve service delivery, how we can improve health system management, how we can improve the efficiency with which health services is, is delivered, for example. And so that to me is, is where we have to think about universal health coverage and think about digital as a, an approach, digital as a tool in our toolbox to help improve um, digital to help improve universal health coverage, but it's not digitization or digitalization for the purpose of digitalization or for the purpose of reporting. It's for the purpose of improving improving services. Millar, feel free if there's anything you'd like to add. You covered it all, Marilise. All good. Uh, thank you. I have one. Uh, I mean, comment to and thank you for to uh, to all our co our bank colleagues. 
to me, I think right now the generative AI, the large language model, is uh, now it kind of the heat topic, yeah. and many many are facing the challenge of how we go about this. So to me, if the uh, know how or the implementation beef topic that we can do, we should focus more relate link about the data governance and the new technology, how it yeah. would use for because of we we uh, we are uh, aiming for effective safe healthcare services at low, low cost right yeah. and this is a new kind of the development like the internet <laughs> the, the, the internet and it, it will be very very uh tough for the country to understand like the basics uh, or, and also how we we gonna have a, 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 a aspect of considering it so that is one my uh two cent recommendation that uh, if the expert in World Bank would like to do that would be uh, a good one and, and, and help country a lot. And thank you. Ling Shai, thank you very much. Um, we have a new knowledge center at the World Bank called the AI for People Knowledge Center, where we're trying to collect this kind of evidence because this is an area we're all learning, right? Every day, one new thing about generative AI. So um, thank you for your advice. I feel that might be one implementation brief that we might to need to rewrite every week because this space is is moving so quickly but we do need to get ahead of it and we do need to help countries figure out what are responsible ways to harvest the benefit of this innovation without stifling stifling um innovation at at the same time maybe i will end with a very short note but first it's so nice to see so many familiar faces once the video started popping up so hello to everyone again um is that is that uh, uh i put some notes in the chat but i just wanted to again um bring back what jay said we're, we're very keen to work with networks i think the networks better understand the real challenges on the ground so we'll be really keen to hear and Jay, we, uh, Jay Vikas, um, we already work with Kirsten. So we, we're happy to reach out here uh, from you, how we can collaborate, uh, Jay, based on what we discussed today and all the areas that, uh, you know, uh, where we received already some early feedback from, from the great group of people you brought together here. Thank you very much for taking time. Uh, thank you, Muller. Thank you, Marilis and Tiago uh, for being with us. I think we, uh, we actually look forward for the next in series uh, that focuses on blueprint because that was also the topic of our uh, uh, actually the GM putting the blueprints to practice and then I actually also see our good friend Jack also here and then we look forward to for the digital health blueprint as well as the cost of plan because that is something and asked from many of the countries so that will be very useful thank you very much also bringing up uh, Marilis for JLN our uh, peer network here and then with whom we have a long-standing association uh, thanks very much and look forward to work together. Thank you.